So let me ask you, how many of you out there heat your home with steam heat? And how many of you out there are using this valve to throttle down the radiator? If I turn it down, maybe not quite closed, I'll get a little less heat. If I turn it maybe not quite all the way open, I'll get a little more heat. If I leave it in the middle, you know, I can control the amount of heat coming into the radiator. And then all of a sudden, the radiator is banging like somebody's in there with a hammer like a crazy person. And then all of a sudden, the water is shooting out of the air valve, going all over the floor. Maybe the new laminate floor you just had installed. Well, if that's you, then you need to watch this video. Hey, welcome folks. Bob here from BobsPlumbingVideos.com. On this channel, I provide free plumbing tutorials for people who don't want to call a plumber. No scientific data, no fancy chemical breakdown of the materials I use in these videos, just common sense solutions to everyday plumbing problems. After all, folks, you shouldn't have to take out a mortgage to be able to afford a plumber. If you're new to the channel, I highly recommend you subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. Now, let's get into this video. So, all right, here we are. I get the phone call. I have a radiator that's leaking. I have a radiator that's banging. I have a radiator that's making noise. Okay, fine. We set up an appointment. I get to the customer's home, and sometimes the radiator is all the way on. Sometimes the radiator is all the way off, especially if it's spitting a lot of water out of the air valve. And other times that valve, the service valve, there is kind of somewhere in between. It's not fully opened, it's not fully closed, and they're hearing water gurgling and banging. And let me just start by saying, uh, this is my opinion. I mean, I've been doing this long enough to have formed this opinion, but these service valves, steam valves, radiator valves, whatever you would like to call them, here in steam country, uh, I'm in New York, Brooklyn, New York in particular, and I would say the majority of homes here are heated with steam, followed by hydronics, followed by HVAC, warm air, forced air, followed probably by radiant in terms of popularity. But essentially, the steam boils are located in the basements. We have basements below grade here, and you know when the call for heat comes on, the boiler starts up, starts cooking, uh, gets to a point where it makes steam, and then the steam comes through the distribution system, through the pipes, into the radiators. And as that's happening, the steam is pushing the air out via the air valves. And once all the air is out of the radiator, the air valve will shut, thereby trapping the steam, and the steam starts to radiate the heat into the room. And as the radiator cools off, it creates condensation which works its way down to the bottom of the radiator. And in a perfect world, with perfect piping, that condensation is going to work its way back into the valve and then down back to the boiler via the return lines. And that's basically the way it works. Um, but I find all too often that people use the service valve to control the amount of heat coming out of the radiator. There, there, there's a misconception that if you turn that valve down or throttle it down, if you will, that, you know, the radiator will get a little hot. It won't get crazy hot. And that's just not the case. What happens when you turn that valve, there's a little fiber disc in there. There's a stem and there's a fiber disc at the bottom of that valve. And Basically, what you're doing is that as the system goes through its sequence of operation, the radiator heats up, radiates the heat, cools down, the condensation works its way down to the bottom of the radiator. Um, what you're doing by turning that valve down or throttling it down, you're actually preventing or you're impeding the water's ability to get back out and go back down to the boiler. And this may not happen on a first try. I've often empty out radiators that were full of water because the person was throttling the valves up and down and eventually got to the point where I would disconnect the radiator and I got, you know, maybe a pot of water out of it. And that happened over many cycles. So I could theoretically put it back together again and they could start playing around with that valve. And it may not happen right away, but, you know, a few weeks later, 
uh, they'll start to get the banging again. And my, my, my take on this is this. I tell people, listen, this is a service valve. This is not meant to control the amount of heat. Now, they do make, for steam heating systems, they make uh, valves that can be put on the air valve side that will control the amount of air coming out. You can actually shut uh, the, the, you can actually kill the airflow on the air valve side, and that will prevent the steam from coming in. But that's a whole other video. Those are called Danforth valves, and they work under the right circumstances. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about specifically people um, throttling down these valves because they're under the misconception that they can control the amount of heat in the radiator. These, to me, are just plain and simple service valves where you can shut it off in an emergency. Let's say, I mean, I've been on jobs where the air valves have actually popped off or people have attempted to change them and they've broken off and, you know, you need to shut the radiator off in a hurry and that's what that service valve is for. You shut it off, you, you tend to the emergency and you turn it back on again. Now, truth be told, these valves, when they were installed in most systems, probably, you know, pick a time frame. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you know, have never been touched. And then all of a sudden people start touching them. They'll start to leak from the stem. They'll start to leak from the union connection between the radiator and the valve. And when that happens, my, my policy is I just change the valve. It's time for a new valve. And my thing is this. I tell people, listen, uh, if you're really too warm or... In a lot of cases, the radiators are too big for the rooms and they just, they're like, they're dying. They got the windows open. And here's my thing. If you're going to shut a radiator off or you don't want that radiator to get hot, my thing is to shut the radiator off when it's cold. You don't want the heat to come in the radiator, just shut it off when it's cold. Make sure there's no steam in there when you shut it. But inevitably, no one listens. So. If you're going to shut the radiator off when it's hot, a.k.a. full of steam, uh, you should remember that when the system goes through its cycles and everything cools back down again, I would recommend opening up the valve so that you can let the condensate or water that's sitting at the bottom of the radiator drain back into the system. Because if you don't, it's going to be a problem. If you decide that on the next cycle or the next day, you're sitting in the room and you're getting chilly and you previously turned the radiator off when it was hot, and now you decide, gee, I'm chilly. I got to turn this thing back on again. Now you have cold water in the radiator. You have a system that's working. It's pushing up steam pressure. And on the inlet side of the valve coming from the steam system, you have this hot steam in there and you're starting to turn that valve on now and you have this like mad hot steam that's going to come into contact with this cool water and it's going to bang like like there's a crazy man in there with a hammer not only that that steam is going to push that water up and at the air valve and it's going to you know go all over the place and you know eventually it's going to cause the air valve to fail and the air valve's not going to shut and it's just going to hiss away and you're going to be spending money for no reason. So, you know, not to make this video a long drawn out video, folks, these are service valves. They're, they're strictly there, in my opinion, for the plumber to come in or, or whoever is doing the maintenance in the building so they can shut the radiator off, you know, disconnect it, do whatever they got to do, reconnect it, turn it back on again, and that's it. They are not a means of controlling how hot a radiator can get. And if you don't believe me, I mean, you can walk into any apartment building in the city of New York or Brooklyn, and, and, and I can show you dozens and dozens of radiators that are in the midway position. They're half on, they're half off. There's gurgling, there's spitting. Uh, you know, people think that they hear this and they hear the gurgling in the radiator and the spitting coming out of the air valve. And, the, and to them, that's just, oh, that's the heat coming up, especially in the apartment buildings. Apartment buildings are crazy with the heat. So to, uh, to review here, 
As it says at the top, the service valve is meant for an emergency shutdown, not to control the amount of heat in the radiator. It should be left completely open or all the way closed. Anywhere in between will trap water and cause the air valve to leak water. Now, we don't want to do that, folks. Now, also, as a side note here, I would recommend, depending upon where the service valve is connected, the opposite end should be raised slightly to pitch the radiator toward the service valve. Because as the steam cools down, condensates, water forms, you want that water to get back into the system. Now, you can see under the floor here where the steam flow is, uh, I have those pipes pitched and they're supposed to be pitched. They're not always pitched. You have back pitched pipes under the floor, which can cause problems. There's water sitting in the pipes and then Every time the steam comes up the pipes, it pushes the water into the radiator and out the air valve. That's a separate problem. This is just about the steam valve, as I like to call this steam valve basics. So folks, if you're hot or you don't want the, the heat in that radiator, shut it off when it's cold. But if you do forget and you shut the radiator off when it's hot, you should remember that when the steam system goes through its cycle and cools down. You should open up that valve again and let that water drain back into the system. Now, if it gets to the point where you got so much water in the radiator that it's got to be disconnected, then you're going to have to get somebody in there to disconnect it, empty the water out of the radiator, reconnect the valve, and then you'll be good to go. So I hope this video helped. I hope if anybody is experiencing the banging, spitting, uh, I'm too hot in this room uh, radiator scenario. Uh, I hope uh, I opened your eyes a little bit. And if you enjoyed this video, I would uh, highly recommend you giving it a like and uh, please subscribe to my channel. And that's it, folks. It's a service valve. It's not a ways to control the heat. Keep that in mind. And I will see you on my next video. So there you go, guys. Now you know what not to do with these steam radiator valves. They're service valves. They're not made to control the amount of heat in your steam radiator. And if you do that, you're going to cause banging, you're going to cause spitting, and you're going to cause a whole bunch of problems. Folks, if you're getting value out of these videos, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. But more importantly, hit that like button. When you hit that like button, YouTube posts these videos in front of more eyes, thereby saving more people some money. Folks, I want to thank you for stopping by. Keep an eye out for these two videos that are going to pop up here to your right. One of them I chose, one of them YouTube chose. I want to say thanks for stopping by. Come by often. I'm happy to see you. Stay well. And as always, until my next video, happy plumbing.